So it's a rainy day, it's early in the morning. We are at a flea market, uh, I've been to it many times. It's all inside, so no big deal. It's one of the few that's around here in the winter. We're gonna hop in and see what we can find. Now I found this bill, I had to ask for a uh, price on most of this stuff here. Now they had some music playing, so unfortunately I had to mute everything because they had the local radio station on. But this is a gentleman, a uh, couple I guess you'd say, that uh, I've dealt with many, many times. There's some composition figures in there made with sawdust, those are from World War One. Got a nice epaulette of an artillery, I believe it's European, maybe a French one right here in my hand. He also had some tin types, uh, some old tickets, but his prices these days keep going up and up and up. So wasn't a whole lot here that I could actually make any money on. He had a Harvard uh, football game ticket. He wanted way, way top dollar for it. Now, usually these big dump cases here, I can find at least something in it. I usually look through all of these sorts. Don't ever pass these by because you never know what you're going to find. Some of the pencils he had in here might have been worth it, but they were borderline on condition and age. Again, I dig through all this stuff. This is the junk that most other people just don't see much of a value here. You never know what you're going to find in these sorts of things here at all. Now, this is a chatty Cathy little booklet. It would have came with a doll. It was potential, but it wasn't really worth much either. Uh, I'll deal on some of these other comics, but they're a little bit more, you know, better comics, even though some of them aren't the best shape. They're still graded accordingly. And I got a whole box down here of superheroes and other comics too. Right? You mind if I come around and take a look at it or? Sure. Most of those are all gold key, but there's some good ones in there. Number ones like Man from Uncle and Get Smart, Monsters, and things like that. Everything on that table is a dollar a piece, no matter what it's marked. All the NASCAR stuff is a dollar. Is this, this table right here? Yep, the brown table. Well, the NASCAR overflows on this side, too. Yep. Now, I always look through the display cases, too. Just like I said, buckles, belts, any of that stuff. Lots of pins, buttons, uh, jewelry, all that sort of thing. Most of this just looks like modern-day junk. Some of the better ones were over here, and these weren't that good either. <laughs> what about the 78 records? How much are those? Dollar each. A dollar per set or a dollar per disc or what? Dollar set. Oh, well, I might do that too. I think this is ripped out of something else. Yeah, that one's missing something. Yeah, I got that one. This one. Shame on the. Yeah, we expect for a buck. Yeah, I know. I'll you take know? it for a dollar too. Okay. Here's a couple more comics I threw over there for a buck each. Yeah, I think I'll pass on here. As you see, this person has a whole bunch of Christmas lights. They were too high priced, but Christmas lights always sell. You'll see them at these types of places all of the time. Yeah, and put a video on it, do it live on Facebook. Now most of this isn't very good, it's just like leftover junk it looks like. This guy had some decent figures, but he wanted top dollar. I couldn't make a dime buying anything from him. 
Nice items, as I said, but again, top dollar for pretty much everything. Now this guy had a bunch of postcards and I actually came back and I bought a whole mess of postcards from him as well. Now most of the ones in the book there weren't very good, but when I dug through some of the boxes, he had some boxes right there, I did score out on those. I did find a whole bunch of paper at the same booth as well, so this guy turned out to be a pretty good uh, stop for me for sure. We made hundreds off of this one single booth, and that's not counting the postcards that I bought, and I bought a whole bunch of them. How much is your uh, single sheets over here? I'm just curious in general, so as They're I probably a buck. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, the Christmas stuff is, is a buck, and these are a, a buck or two bucks, depending on the, but I can make you a deal. Okay, okay. I, uh, I just put them out, and I've had them for a million years. Are you into a lot of old paper, their various things? Yeah, I'm a paper person. Well, I'll tell you what, I got something back there after you're done. I have no idea what, but I don't have enough room on my table, but I know there's a, you and there's another fellow that comes in that likes a lot of, you know, just all kinds of random paper. So if you want to look through this. Sure, yeah, give me just a second. I'm glad to. So I'm back from the flea market. I got a little stack, some books, some papers some pens and some things like that in here. We're gonna show you some close-ups of those as well. I also got a couple hundred postcards, which I'll probably do in maybe a separate video. Now, I also got this here too. Now, this is a hologram and it's actually lighted. I think there's a switch you can turn it off. So it's basically a lenticular Jesus, and it has a piece of plastic on the front. I can take this off if I want. It'll look a little better. But when you turn it on, you can see the lenticular. It's uh, dimensional. So as you turn it, it looks like Jesus is moving. Now, this is working. Everything is complete. I have the frame. The whole works. Just like this, I should get 60 to 80 bucks, bare bones minimum on these. I do phenomenally well on any of these sorts here. Now, it had 10 bucks on it. I got it for 8 So... You can't really knock it on these sorts of things. Anything lenticular, I do phenomenally well every time I grab it. Now here's some of what I found. I've got some postcards too, which I may show in another video. Now this was pretty neat. I don't usually run into nicer versions of these. This is a straight razor for those who aren't familiar with what it is. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, but it actually has writing on the blade. You should be able to see it there now. Um, this is an original one. This is a Sheffield. This is a Wade and Butcher. This handle here is buffalo horn, and that's the key to this one here. It's a blonde buffalo horn. Uh, this is a specific model. If you look on eBay, most of this exact one here, even without the box, goes for like 60 bucks. Now, I paid 5 bucks for this because it was a Wade and Butcher. I wasn't 100% sure. I, I know that the ones with the etched in um, images or writing on the blade itself are usually good. This one's marked Sheffield, so you know you can't go wrong on something like that for five bucks. This will get me an easy 50 buck profit. I'm just going to put it up where I want it and I'll leave it until it sells. Now the actual handle is usually damaged when I run into these, but this one's honestly really nice. Very sturdy. For 1880s, 1890s, it's held up very, very good. The box isn't so great, but I may even have a better condition box I can swap it out with here. Uh, again, five bucks on that. Now, I bought six pens. One of these is laying in the bottom of my car somewhere. Unfortunately, it rolled out of there. Now, these are um, floaters, floating pens. Floaters is usually what I see them, and it has transportation images on there where a boat, in fact, I can probably zoom in a little better so you can see it. 
you can see the ships on there and the ship actually moves from side to side you can kind of see the paddle steamer moving off in the background a little bit there um, and there it goes a little bit there probably needs to be shaken up and maybe it's running out of fluid but these usually I get 15 bucks for when they're advertising like this one here it's for a unique thing Alaska Marine Highway um, again it's an interesting one it will go for 15 20 bucks now she had some other ones to the lady I bought this from but I bought the ones I figured would sell for the most money there's a camel with someone pulling it across the the desert there goes in both directions you should be able to see it coasting back on down these are again floaters this one's a Las Vegas hotel a casino this is the Alamo interesting one it has a bubble some I guess a cannon rotates back and forth and some stars and some other things in there this one ought to be good I can add military to it 15 20 bucks for each one of these now these were a dollar a piece or if I bought six of them I get them for five bucks there's a whole bunch of stuff for a dollar a piece on the table same thing now this one has the uh, Chicago subway cars uh, elevated train the whole works in it so this one should be pretty good it has double imagery on it where there's some images on the face and the front of this uh, people standing there and then a secondary one in the back so the actual train goes between the people and the background so it's almost like a three-dimensional moving image it's almost like a cartoon to some extent this is a pretty nice one here it's one I haven't seen before so again these are vintage they're original they're marked no doubt about it in, in any way shape and form the ones that were made in Denmark are the ones that are the best and these are all Denmark originals this is Pike Place Market it's a store advertisement uh, it's got fish and apples and fruit and stuff in their storefront again these are all like 60s or 70s 15 20 bucks a piece so I've got five bucks into six of these and I should easily after all said and done after fees and everything's paid probably get around 65 75 bucks back out of these all profit after everything is said and done so now here's some paper items here now I've run into these Ohio Railroad uh, dollar bills here now these are like stock ones this is from like a stock and it would be like a payment on it. it's from 1836 that's the actual original date this was actually printed on and you can see it right there it had this been an actual bill it'd be worth a lot more uh, for a dollar or so I'm fine with that I'll advertise this correctly this will sell better in the railroad transportation section than it would in the bill section because this isn't technically a banknote of sorts it's a nice condition I will crisp this up I will probably flatten it all out where it'll be nice and crispy it will sell much better I've had a couple of these before they do show up in this local area it's something you will run into in Ohio and Michigan area they were pretty prevalent at one point back in the 1830s 40s there wasn't US currency so things like this would float around and this one wasn't actually uh, used no signatures or anything on it and you could put a different town so they're from any town basically around again 30 bucks or better for that one now this one I don't think the person knew what this was this is the SS Stockholm and this is an actual steamship company and it's a menu card for the Swedish American line this very nice one here uh, 1925 most of these sorts I get 40 50 bucks I'm probably gonna put 75 on it and just see what happens uh, dining room cabin a deck so this tells you exactly where you would have eaten at this point here so it's a nice interesting one decent artwork nice image of the ship on it which is what I'm going to use for the main image on eBay now here's a quack medicine advertisement um, the biggest uh, nickels worth in the world in this issue now I don't think it's a nickel for this book I think what the nickel is is for the quack medicine that they're advertising this is Angier's throat tablets for cough and they made a whole bunch of other quack medicine and that's what this is the Angier idea so they could advertise and give you some information where everything goes back and relates to them a lot of false claims were things that would cure and all that sort of thing there's some military content in here too so this is actually not a bad one here in honesty this one should get me geez I'm probably gonna put 5750 or better on it this one was a dollar or less in fact I actually paid two dollars for these three things right here um, he let me set some offers because I bought you know a bunch of other little booklets and stuff from him too so this one here, as I said, 34 to 5750. I should at least get 30 bucks for this one. Now, this is a Focus miniature magazine. Um, I think this is like the 50s, if I'm not mistaken. 
uh, let's see here, what's the date on here? 1951. This is volume one, number one. So this is a first issue. These would have been the little ones you saw at the checkout. Uh, it was 10 cents back then. Marilyn Monroe was on some of these issues. Most of these I get 10 or so bucks for or better. So it's got some interesting things on it. It talks about napalm in this time and era. Uh, any stories that may have some bombshell in it or something, someone famous, um, all that kind of stuff adds to the value on these sorts of things. So if there was an article on, say, Korean War or something, I'd probably do very good, uh, a little better than the 10 bucks I expect to get out of this. Now here's a German book that I found in the lot, and this is actually a very limited pressing let me get to the beginning of it here past it now this is Albrecht Durer and he was a very well-known artist from around 1480s or so up through 1500s the very beginning this is talking about the museum collection of the Reichstag and this is a book written on the 400th anniversary I believe of his death by Wilhelm Schaefer. And now the interesting part on here is I found in the back, I spent a minute to look at this because it doesn't look like a normal edition. Now this is a limited edition signed by the author. Looks like there's only a hundred of these made. This one is numbered here as well, 64. So excellent copy. It's signed. The regular one of these goes for like 20 or 30 bucks. I've never seen a signed edition nor this limited edition. It's custom printed, custom paper. This is basically this gentleman's speech at the Reichstag Museum. It's his whole speech written down here talking about the collection, his history, and the whole work. So this is an interesting piece. Something I expect probably get 75 bucks or better for. Now here's another interesting one here. Now this is an annual report for the Indiana and Michigan Electric Company and their subsidiaries from 1915. Now, this didn't get this name, I think, until like 1911. So this is very early. This company still exists, so that's even better. And it has, I mean, a chart of every dime they made since 1911 on, which is when the name was adopted for this company. Lots of interesting data information. These are hand put together, it looks like. It looks like they took a pre-existing book um, and then actually just mimeographed it. So it wasn't done at a printer. Very generic, very cheaply done, I should say, without a doubt. Very interesting. It's got some interesting information on here. Now, these don't show up, these sorts of things, for any company. Ones of these from a known company that still exists, even into the 40s and 50s, goes for over 100 bucks. So this one here, I'm going to put 150 on it and just see what happens. Now, this is actually bound in leather with gilt. I looked at it closely. It's a thin piece of leather on the top and all the way around on this one here. So it's a nice one here. Now, here's another advertising piece. This is like a tourist item. Um, and it's got a lot of interesting ads in there. Skiing, hobbies, stock car races. So, there, I mean, there's a ton of interesting ads from this whole area. Miracle House, that's very well known. Um, rock climbing, something you just don't see. Dog races. It's got a map of the area. Most of these I get, say, 20 25 bucks or better on here. And it's actually got something pretty interesting, these little treasure trove dogs, ceramic pieces there. So that's a nice one, too. I did get some sheet music-related items. This one here isn't super, super valuable. I'll get about 15 bucks for it. The condition is just really nice. It's a sheet music book. This is Kentucky bluegrass, basically, mountain ballads, they called them back in the day. He's not super, super well collected, but I'll sell it as long as I market it correctly, use good words in the title. Now, Judy Garland sheet music, I usually nab up. I've had this one three or four times. This is a $30 to $40 sheet music on the Atchison, Topeka, and the Santa Fe, and that's the railroad line. Now, no real damage or issues to it whatsoever. It looks nice. It'll display nice. Highly collected. Again, 30 to 40 bucks for this one. The sheet musics were like 50 cents or a dollar, so they were extremely cheap for what I'm going to get back out of them. I only picked the ones that I wanted. Over the Rainbow, this is a $30 one. This is an original one from when the movie first came out. So, excellent condition. If you buy these, always make sure that they're all there. It does have some pencil marks on it. I'm going to erase that on this piece specifically. You want these to look as nice as possible. It is pencil. It will all come off. So, an original from the actual release of when this was first released. $30, $40. Bucks. Now, Disney ones I grab because they always sell. I don't make a ton on them, though. This is like a $15 piece. I'll list this in the Disney section, not in the sheet music section. It will do better in the Disney section. You'll date it as the date it came out, 37. Complete, excellent condition, original, Snow White, Whistle While You Work sheet music. It's going to sell 15 bucks really quickly. 
Now, I did get some uh, carpenters here, as you can see. Now, this is the dollar one. This one will get me about 15 to, say, 18 bucks. I've had it two or three times. I always get that for it. And I got a couple other just junkers to throw in because now I can say lot, and I can now list this for around $34.50, and I should get around 28 bucks for these three together as a lot. It's an easy sale without a doubt. This is the seller one. It's got the psychedelics and the whole works on it. Now, I took a shot on this one here for a dollar. It's Tom Jones. It's a program from one of his uh, tours. Now, it's not super, super pricey. Most of these are averaging around 10 bucks. I'll probably get 15 or, or 24, I would say, only because I'm going to be uh, very specific on marketing it. I might even show poster or something like that. If I show what everybody else is showing, it won't sell. But if I show a different image, like the inside centerfold, I'll probably do far better on this one. So I'll probably get 15 or 20 on it. Here's a magazine title I almost never run into, Movie Fan Magazine. So, And I'm very happy to get this one here. This is Frank Sinatra on the cover, and this is 1948. This one here is the most expensive one of these that I have seen, the Movie Fan Magazine. It has one little minor error or issue appear on the spine. Other than that, it's an excellent sellable copy. This one here will get me 40 or 50 bucks. Easy, easy, easy on this one. It's complete. Everything's there. Lots and lots of content in it. Movie stars, the whole works. This magazine title doesn't show up very often, but he is one of the hottest ones on here to get. Usually I don't find the ones from the 40s, but this one was a primo pick right here for another dollar. Here's another magazine. It's volume one, number one. So this is first issue of Hoedown. It's got Wanda Jackson, a country music performer. This isn't super pricey, but I'll get about 15 bucks for it at most. This was a 50 cent a dollar pickup. Now here's the official Rocky scrapbook in excellent, excellent, excellent condition. Now most of these people assume don't carry a big value. It's just a photo book uh, going all over Rocky and the whole works. It has some script pages and things like that in it. This is worth 40 or 50 bucks. So always pay attention to these. Some of the Star Wars ones are worth 40, 50 bucks. Most of the vintage 70s movies nowadays, the storybooks, as long as they're, you know, like the scrapbook, storybook, thick, decent sized ones in excellent condition. Again, this is in really nice condition here. 30, 40, 50 bucks. This one here, I'm definitely going to get at least 40 bucks for it. A dollar purchase again. Now, here's another one of those I took a shot on for a dollar. It's Johnny Cash, Silver Anniversary Limited Edition program that would have been, um, I guess, available at the museum or something like that. It has a museum souvenir uh, sheet in it, too. And this on its own, I could probably get eight or so bucks for it just for this sheet here. So, in fact, it advertises it there. It was five bucks when, when this person went to the museum, the Johnny Cash Museum. So now with this booklet and this together, I'll get about 15 or 20 bucks for this dollar. You know, no big deal. Not a super, uh, super high value sale, but it'll be quick. It won't be something that I'll have to worry about. I'll put it up and then I'll just simply forget about it. It actually has embossing on the cover. It's not too bad. Now, I picked up a couple of these catalogs. Now, these are McCall's patterns. They still make them today. 1904 Spring and Summer Catalog. And it shows every single pattern that they had available. Excellent, excellent. Now, if you market this correctly, you get some nice shots showing the dresses and, and the whole works. You can do very well on these. 40, 50, 60, 75 bucks or better on some of these earlier ones, especially in this condition here. I paid a dollar a piece for these two, so I'm not going to quibble at all. I guarantee you this will get me at least 30 bucks, if not more. So, um, again, I've got two of them. I've got 1907 as well, autumn, fall, winter, uh, right here. So, again, 30, 40 bucks bare bones minimum on these catalogs. I always do well in the catalogs. You just have to advertise them. Now on this one here, I will show a couple extra pictures. So there'll probably be five to seven images used. And I'll probably do like a close up like this or something for some of them too. Because it's just fabulous. The, the, the dresses, the outfits, it goes into what the patterns are and the whole work. So this very nice one here without a doubt. I always do phenomenally well in these. For a dollar, I'd buy these all day long. I'd buy every one that I run into like this. Demarest, many of the other companies that did patterns have these books too. Seed catalogs, catalogs in general, farming catalogs, anything from this era, catalog wise, I usually get at least 30 bucks for bare bones minimum for just the worst ones. Now, I'm going to save the best piece for last here. Let me show you something else. Now, I love 78 Records. This was a dollar on a dollar table because it was ratted out on this. Now, I'm probably going to repair this. I've got some of the original looking, uh, like a filler tape that they used, a spine, spine repair tape that they used. 
for a dollar, I'll get at least 20 bucks for this, as long as I just tape over and fix with the actual original Time Era um, binding tape on there. I'll use that on the side there. But, but this has the full-fledged cartoon in here. So this will go in the Disney section. I'll show a bunch of pictures of this, of the, the artwork in here, too. Because, again, this is like a whole little kid's book in general. And then it has two records that are in excellent condition as well, too. Now, I wished the actual spine was better, but, you know, for a dollar, I'm not going to quibble at all. It will be an easy, say, 15 to 20 buck return on my investment, without a doubt. So, now let's get to the last couple items here. Now, I buy old comic books all the time. These were the cheapo a dollar ones. And these two here aren't anything spectacular. They're cheapos. I bought this one because it's a 1951 Marvel. It's a Marvel comic book. Spider-Man and Creators of Spider-Man, it's the same one. I know somebody will buy every one of these for 8 to 10 bucks, regardless. He wants all the Marvel he can get. The vintage one's the best. Um, again, it's not in great condition. It's complete in the whole works. I paid a dollar for that one, and then I paid a dollar for this one, Heckle and Jekyll. This is a St. John's. That's the, the printer, the publisher. I always buy these. This one's probably worth about 15 to 25 bucks as it is. Not super, super spectacular, but it's still a decent comic book, to say the least, on this one here. I will get that much for it. Um, what else I do with these, if they aren't like something I can sell individually, I usually just put these together in a lot. I'll buy dollar Golden Age comic books just to put a Golden Age comic book lot together. And what I'll do is I'll seed in a nicer comic book, like one or two, like an uh, ratted out EC or something, and I'll sell, say, a Golden Age lot of, say, 10 comic books for, say, 50 bucks or something. It depends on how valuable the the one I seed in here. Most all of them except one will be just these cheapo dollar ones, and they'll, I'll stick one good comic book in there. Not anything super spectacular, but one enough where I can market these off as a golden age lot of comics. And I always do very well. When I list them that way, you usually get an average of about four bucks for these Junker $1 comic books. Now, I know that's not a fortune, but I'm doing it in a lot. So I might throw in nine dollars worth of, you know, comic books, dollar purchases. So I got nine bucks into it and I'll get 27 back out of these at three bucks a pop. Again, you got to market it just right. You got to put in one decent comic book to get somebody to be interested in it. And usually they'll just go ahead and, you know, do something with the cheaper ones themselves. Now, the best purchase today is this comic book here. Now, this may not look like much to the average person, but this is the first appearance of the Doom Patrol. This is My Greatest Adventure, issue 80. It's a title you don't run into very much. Now, this is complete. The only real big issue here is a tiny little issue on the corners over here, which I can actually fix to some extent. It can be ironed out. It can be carefully taken care of, where it won't affect anything like that. It's complete. The pages inside, in fact, let's take off the tape and do this safely here the pages inside this look very very nice i usually don't find good comic books like this and again i only have a few bucks in the comic books themselves let me get this out very carefully here now this one here books if i had it graded it was graded high this comic book here can go up to three thousand dollars or better in this condition here and again it looks really nice the insides are, are fairly nice it's not very yellowed I should easily get at least 400 bucks for this comic book because it's the first appearance of the Doom Patrol. So it goes into the whole story. It starts right off with the Doom Patrol. Again, you can see there's some minor issues here on this corner. Don't want to damage it any worse than it is, but this should do extremely well for us. I'm probably going to put it up for like 575, 575 bucks and just leave it at that. This is, again, this is a first appearance of somebody well-known. The Doom Patrol has been around for a very long time. Maybe they're doing a movie about the Doom Patrol, if I'm not mistaken. But let's zoom in just a little bit there so you can see the issues there. It looks fairly nice. It's not a bad copy of this. This will have no problem selling for hundreds of bucks, without a doubt. This is a key issue. Uh, and it's a title that doesn't show up very often. My Greatest Adventure, you just don't run into. So, well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
bugging you? Yeah. It's this whole business about profits. I mean, what has that got to do with one guy like me? One guy. Arthur, that's where profits start. With one guy. One gal. A lot of guys and gals working in your store. But one individual can... Well, take yourself. You can make the difference between a loss and a profit. 